Glory be to your name, God. Glory be to your name, God. Glory be to your name, Lord. Glory be to your name, God. Glory be to your name, Lord. Glory be to your name, God. Glory be to your name, Lord. Glory be to your name, Lord. Glory be to your name, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. There is no God before you, no God beside you, and no God after you. How do we know? You made us to know. You made us to understand. You're living in written word, Lord. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your wonderful and mighty name. Glory be to your name, God. There is no name that is named under the sun that is greater than your name. Glory be to your name. We bless the name of the Father. We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us day in and day out. We thank you putting forgiveness in its place for us. We thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome to another evening, Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. It is an honor for me to be before the Lord and to be before you. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to continue in the series, Strongholds Will Fall. As you remember, I was told to change it from must fall to will fall. Because where the presence of the Lord is, darkness cannot remain. And I know the battle for myself that comes up against every believer and every non-believer. And that battle comes to us because sin is present in man who is unforgiven, unredeemed by the Lord. And because of sin, Satan has access as being the prince and the power of the air according to the word of God. Which means he runs this worldly system. Satan is a God. He's not the most high God, but he's a God to all who worship him. He is the prince and the power of the air. We're talking about strongholds. What are they? Where do they come from? We spoke last time that strongholds are lies that are received in the mind of men who become these great, massive walls that keep a man or a woman from being successful and moving and operating in the things of God. We also talked about strongholds existing because of man's choices, his wrong choices. And I want you to remember that tonight because, you know, I try to come up here as honest as possible. And uh, I really know that God is watching me, that God is with me. And so, you know, that causes me to say truthful things about myself. Because I feel that if a minister doesn't allow you to come into his life, Jesus allowed the hearer to hear his life and see his life on display. And I believe preachers and teachers who hide themselves behind Moses and hide themselves behind Aaron are doing Moses and Aaron and the Lord an injustice because even Moses put his own life on the line so that we could plainly see what thus saith the Lord. And I, I want to tell you, I was not always this man that I am now who is presently and currently seeking God for change. I am, I am not, because I'm a preacher, I feel far from perfect inside the body. 
while Jesus is perfecting my inner man, the natural man is still going through changes. And when you go through changes, you go through pain. When you go through changes, you go through the pain that comes along with the changes. And a lot of those changes and the pain that comes along with it is because of the choices we make. One of the choices we make to bless us with a, with a positive stronghold is to obey God. The other one is to disobey God, which puts us behind the wall of the enemy's lies. And I really want everybody to understand, especially the worldly viewer, the person who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord yet, I want you to really consider what you're hearing. And before you judge the matter, I want you to write all these scriptures down. So get a pen, something to write with, and get a paper, something to write on. Take down these scriptures I'm going to say tonight and go and study them for yourself. You don't need a friend, you don't need a neighbor. Go in a room, shut the door, get out a Bible. Now the Word of God is on the internet, it's on the cell phone, it's on the tablet, it's all over the world by different means. And so I want you viewer to pay attention and especially you Christian. Why? If a stronghold exists in the mind of a believer, it is because the believer has yet to realize that when they surrendered their lives to Christ, all strongholds fell. They fell. But what happens is, we give our lives to Christ and he destroys all of our enemy and all the works of the enemy according to the word. And he redeems us out of sin and the world and brings us into his bosom. He said, whosoever the Father puts in his hand, no man can no way take out, no devil neither. And what happens is, over the course of time, we step into a silent disobedience that speaks very loud to God. It may be unnoticed by man, but it's noticed by God, and the adversary of man he, he knows it as well. And what is it? God said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. Wherever a believer who confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, wherever he, whenever he finds himself behind a stronghold, finding it difficult to operate in the things of God, he must and she must take a look at are they obeying that scripture right there. Are you transforming your mind? Because when, you, when, you, when Christ saves you, he gives you a new heart. He takes out the stony heart and gives you a fresh new spirit that has never sinned. But your mind still has memories of sin. And the reason he said be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind by the word of God is because it's only by the power of the word that the mind would bend and yield to God. Since the mind is enmity against God. It hates God. That which is born in the flesh it, 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 it hates God. It's an enemy against God. But Christ, in his perfect wisdom, knew how to get himself on the inside of us, making it so that we would be able to walk like him and operate like him and handle the darkness the same way he did in Matthew 4.4. 4. But why do we encounter days and moments and times where we step out of how he showed us to do it in Matthew 4.4 4, and we try to stand dependent upon our own selves, trusting in our own self, relying in our own hand to deliver us, Knowing that he is our shield, 
knowing that he is our buckler and our strong tower, it is because we refuse to obey this one thing. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every Christian who was saved by Christ Jesus, that moment he gets saved, all strongholds are destroyed. But because the mind won't be renewed by the word of God, the Bible says a dog, every dog returns back to his body. So if you've been a Christian, a believer, for any length of time, and you started off one way, and you find yourself doing those things or saying those things or watching those things or going to the places where you used to do as a sinner. It's because you fail to renew your mind with the word of God and trust him in the process and act it out. And so there is nothing for a shadow to do but be a shadow. There's nothing for darkness to do but be darkness. It can never be light. And so a man or a woman who is operating behind a stronghold is operating behind that stronghold because they're choosing darkness rather than light. Light. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. He is the only one who can break the chains. That caused me to have joy. What I have inside of me right now, you're getting it because of the knowledge of God's word in me. I know that God is light. Who is God, they say? Here's the response. God is light. Who is Jesus, they say? Here's the response. God is light. And in him, is no darkness at all. How do we keep our minds or ourselves from falling victim to a flesh that has already be, been defeated? The Bible says, reckon yourself dead unto the flesh and alive unto righteousness. But where there is no renewing of the mind, there's death. And so death can only get death. Death can only get death. The reason Jesus was able to come, die in the body, and live again is because he was life. He never was death. He, he, he died so that we could live. He took on death. Death could never take him. He took on death. He literally by what he done, said death, take me, I'm yours. But not because of me. Death, take me, I'm yours, because of the sin that the Father loves, that light loves. We have a problem stumbling as blind men in the dark, groping for God. Struggling to find it. But if you would renew your mind to the truth, which is this. For every believer, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why are you groping as if you were in the dark? It's a sign of regression. When you have stayed away from operating In the word of God, which changes your mind, keeps your mind under, keeps your flesh under. It is the only living source of life, the only living source of life that can deal with the flesh of man is the spirit of God. There's nothing else. But as I know and you know, if you're a believer, you know that one day you can be up and one day you can be down. You know that you can have a season of greatness and another season of greatness, but because you stop trusting the Lord, it doesn't appear to be a season of greatness to you. 
what believer is not having a season of greatness. If you really understand the word, you are always in a season of greatness. This thing that I, this word that I just spoke to you about a season of greatness, do you know how many years it took for me to be built up by God to be able to say that? If you knew what I was speaking last week, you would know that God is still changing me. I was not able to say that. Why? I had to come to the truth. In order for you to change, you got to come to he who is your change. You'll never see God as your change in, 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 as long as you're still relying on you, still trusting in you, still being dependent upon you to supply all your needs. See those people in that hurricane in Texas? Watching them go through put me in a good place, a place of gratitude. Every year it happens. I be moping and whining, season of moping and whining. That's a season of bad choices. And then I'll hear about a hurricane or earthquake, and I'll see the devastation and see the people, and instantly I can get it together. I do not want that to come upon me. If it comes upon me, I'm in Jesus Christ. But I do, I will tell you this. There's no need for us here. Not going through that. To be in a mind of death. We're not going through that. Who's holding up their arms? Who's holding up their arms? Trust me, the ones who can't go, if you go in your prayer closet, the one who can go, the one who was there when it came. And if you're not spiritual minded, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. You can't understand that God is light and he walk all through the darkness because darkness is not darkness to God. God is there. He may not be the cause, but he's there. Why is God there? Not because the hurricane there. God is not in you because you want him to be there. God is in you because he wants to be in you. But it makes your agreement with God. It takes your agreement with God in order to make that godly life work for you. That hurricane is over there and God is over there. You know why? People are over there and God loves people. He hates sin, but he loves people. He hates what sin does to people, but he loves people. He said in his word, I, I don't wish at all that any man should perish. He said any man. That includes every man, despite what culture they say they are or what religion they say they are. Says God is no respect of a person. And so on that note, we are the sons of, we are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know the stories back to back on how Jehovah the Most High delivered our forefathers out of all kinds of storms, out of all kinds of fires, out of all kinds of famines, crossed them across the sea and, and killed the enemies of the, of the body of Christ in the water, the water that he departed so they can cross, caused it to fall on them and kill. See, the man who holds Satan inside by choice, he has already fallen. How that's going to look in the physical, I can't tell you. But I know how it looks in the spiritual. Pride comes before fall. That man is already dead. So you still talking about strongholds? Yes. Yes. Because how did they get there after we were redeemed? We don't know the importance of putting the word of God on the inside of us. Sometimes we think there's a day we can take a break. 
And there is no day you can take a break. That's the day that the wild might come. That's the day that the temptation, that the enemy will come to test your heart, to tempt you according to a desire you got inside your mind. But look at God, his love for you, even in that day. He says, for with every temptation. He didn't say for with 10, or with 50, or with 1,000, or 10,000, 1,000. He said, with every temptation, every one, there's a way of escape. Years ago, I searched him. I would cry out to him, Lord, which is the way of escape? Lord, I don't want to use drugs. Lord, I don't want to go around sleeping with other women. Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't know what you're doing that represents the darkness inside you. But the way of escape is obeying God's word. That's the only way of escape. Strongholds fall when you do what pastor is teaching about, obey the living God. And for all of you who think you're so trapped and you're so bound, I'm telling you from Sunday to today, the word of God puts something in me that the enemy don't want to deal with. Knowledge of the most high bring down strongholds. Knowledge of the Most High bring down strongholds. How important is it is for you to renew your mind in the things of God? Soon as you stop, you put yourself in jeopardy. If I'm your shield and I'm your buckler and I tell you, stand in me. And you stand behind me, you're vulnerable. Why? Behind me is outside of me. If I tell you I'm your shield and I'm your buckler, stand in me and you stand on the side of me. You're vulnerable. Why? Because you are not inside of me. You're on the side of me. And God is saying, you're inside of me. He said the, he is our strong tower. The righteous run in and are safe. Run into where? Who is Christ? Sometimes we put too much emphasis on this book. And not enough emphasis on Jesus, who is the living word of God. And because he is, this Bible is. We're getting into troubles because we fail to accept we are those who transform our minds and renew our minds by the word of God. To put it down, it's like you're not feeding your baby. Like, all of a sudden in December, you stop feeding her. Like, what, what makes you think she ain't gonna need food? So why do you act like you don't need food? Why do we let the enemy trick us and duke us and then, ah, oh, 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 hey, I'ma say it, Lord. Before it even becomes his fault, we put ourselves out there like if we got to be sheep for the slaughter again when Jesus already became the sacrificial lamb. We don't got to sacrifice ourselves for the, for the desires of the flesh, the agitating passions that hurt. They hurt. They hurt. I'm telling you. I'm telling you they hurt. They keep you from sleeping. They keep you from smiling. To keep you from loving your wife and loving your husband the way you're supposed to. When agitating passions are alive within you and undisciplined by the flesh, you can't even walk in your house in the love of Christ. Who can walk in the valley of the shadow of death without life? Listen to it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The valley 
Death is already in the valley. The valley is called the shadow of death. And all men got to walk through it. Nobody is exempt from walking through it. What makes the believer different from the non-believer is that the believer is equipped. But what happens to a believer who decides not to wear his equipment? He is still vulnerable like the non-believer. I'm telling you sometimes, Lord, forgive us. We put, and you have, thank you, we put Jesus to shame by walking in the flesh again as if we were never redeemed. But you know why we do that? We give up. We give up on Christ. We give up on the Word. See, he said to me a couple of days ago, he said, when you hate your brother, you hate me. But you don't know it. He said, when you murder your brother, you murder me, but you don't know it. He said, but I'm going to tell some of them who thought they were my sons, depart from me, you murderer. I never knew you. And then the one who murdered a man in the world, give his life to Christ after that sincerely, he going to enter the kingdom. But the one who played Christ, he's not. The, don't no one know but the Father who is really saved. Don't no one know but the Father who is really, really saved. Do you know? Do you know on the day you feel heavy, you feel pressed? I sent my brother a text today, we win. Because he used to say it to me. The knowledge of the word came on me. And when the knowledge of the word came on me, that's what I had to say. The knowledge of the word produces a sword. Why did I say we win? What was the motive behind it? Jesus was the motive behind it. And what he did is the foundation behind it. His love for the Father is the motive. When we stop renewing our minds according to the word of God, we lose the motive. Paul got bit by snakes. He slept in the rain. He was hot in the heat wave in the daytime and freezing cold in the desert at night. He went through stomach pains. They tried to poison him. Tried to poison his food. The people who he once worked for to kill a believer was now after him. They hated him. They didn't understand his conversion. They were so blind they couldn't see the vision. How could a man who was killing Christians have a vision on the road and in the vision on the road Jesus knocked him off his horse not with his hand but by way of his brightness his countenance is so powerful you can't stand in his presence as a sinner. That's why he fell off the horse. He was filthy, and filthy met clean, and clean beats filthy any day. So why are we not pure? Why are we not keeping ourselves pure? That's what God is talking to me about. When you stop renewing your mind, you allow yourself to be dirty again. Your mind becomes like a garbage can. Only able and capable of being filtered with garbage. The mind is like a like a like a, a sewer pipe. And inside that sewer pipe, there's a filter, a filter with holes in it to let the, the, the sewage through but but hold back certain bacteria. Uh-uh. 
The mind is worse than that. The mind don't let go of no bacteria that is not forcefully taken care of. The other night I was sleeping. Holy Ghost was moving. He been moving. It just took me a minute to say it. I was sleeping on my right side. I normally sleep on my right side. I feel better. I don't know. I'm sleep eyes closed. How come I can see through the back of my body? Through the back of my body. My grandmother laying behind me and terror was trying to come across my left shoulder and over and into me. And then I heard a voice say, don't you jump up out of your sleep. You know that's a devil. Make him leave. And with my eyes closed, but with my spirit alive in Christ, I was able to talk and tell that devil, get out of my bed. And he left. And I slept like a baby. If you don't have a spiritual mind, you're not going to understand. Even devils understand. But blind man can't understand. Why? You blind. Who has the power of blindness? God is blinding man. The Bible says Satan has the power of blindness to blind men to keep them from coming to Christ until the gospel is preached. And so if the preached gospel saves a man, delivers a man out of the darkness of his ways and brings him into the bosom of Christ, what make you think because you're a believer you got to stop showing light on your mind? How long you been out the word? How long you been out the word? Seriously. Seriously. On the day when the pressure comes, why do you get out the word? What is that wisdom or stupidity? You choose. Why? You want to choose life or death whether you like it or not. Didn't God say renew your mind? Transform did he ever say how long? We can do it. Every individual. This is what blessed me right here. Pastor Ahmed can't do it for me. He could come with any word he want to come with. That's why I'm telling you. So I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's something God put in me. You know, a lot of people, is, I need a word, I need a word. Oh, oh, God, send somebody to talk to me, tell me, tell me. Not me. You know why? Just because he sent somebody with the word don't mean I'm going to obey the word. It's the word that I obey in private that's going to give me the strength to obey the word he sent to somebody else. If my life is weak in private, if he sends somebody and give me the word and it's the truth, it ain't going to do nothing for me. It ain't going to benefit me. Why? In private, I'm weak. So in public, I'm weak even if you don't see it. And God is saying there's too much weakness still. And this is how you fix it. I said, Lord, how do you, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do with it? What do you do with it, God? What do you do with this? What do you do with this war, with this battle? What do you do? Should you keep your mind flowing in the word of God all the time? Then he showed me a day or days or a season when I didn't do it. And little by little, my shoulders began to hump. My face began to droop. My consonants began to get dark. You know why? You got to look at the life of Moses and what happened when God came down on that mountain. That mountain lit up with light. Fire was everywhere. You got to really look into it. You can't just read. 
you know, the story for faith, you got to look at what certain words mean. When God came down on that mountain, there was fire. Like somebody said, a campfire. Fire was coming up and shooting out. The angels must have been getting busy cleaning up that place for God. Because wherever God comes, purity has come. Anything and anyone that fights it dies. So what you think is going to happen to us if we find this way? Something serious was going on inside of me to get me to say that what I'm saying right now. What do you think is going to happen to you Call yourself a believer if you fight his way? You think, what? You've been given the way? And you're going to fight the way? Are you worse than a sinner? who has never tasted the love of God, and you, a believer, tasted the love of God, he said, woe be unto them who tasted of me and turned in their wickedness. I'm telling you, God knows what he's talking about. Cain and Abel, two brothers, told to do the same thing. One said, Lord, here's what I got. Take it, it's yours. You are the most high God, worthy of the most high's praise. And the other one brought God out of his flesh. And God said, I don't want that. I'm pleased with what your brother brought me, but that crap you brought me, I don't do flesh. You come in and pray with flesh, and you want me to answer you with supernatural? You're going to get supernatural, right? You're going to get the other side of love. God is dealing with his people. He's going to deal with us if we don't learn how to obey his word. Be ye transformed in the by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. Never say stop. Never say be hindered. Never say quit. Brother killed his brother because God took his offering. And didn't take his. What is the result of that? One got life, eternal life. The other one got eternal death. Let's look at the conclusion of the matter. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. We read that. You know that. It's the camera people I told you to pen something to write with and something to write on. It's the people viewing over the camera. I told them to get a pen and write the scriptures down so that they, they can go and read. So somebody watching should have wrote down the story of Moses when God met him on the mountain. And then he should be going searching for it. He killed his brother. God said, what's wrong with you? I love you and him the same. He did what I said and you did not. He brought me from his heart, from a spirit of worship, and you brought me from your flesh, from a mind of sin. He said, I'm never going to, I'm not going to take that. God is saying to us right now, I'm not going to take that. I didn't send Jesus to die and redeem you from the curse so you could give me sin. Or, or, mm, or a, a dirty mind, how I'm going to operate in there? You know, in order for me to operate in there, I got to come and clean that up, but I did that already. How many times you want me to come and clean you up? Seems to me, real strong declaration of faith. Verbalize. How could you verbalize a declaration of faith without the word of God? Out the word of faith being believed. I've been in Christ so many years and I have not had the path or the flow of consistency in what I'm talking about the way that will please God. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. That's why recently I told you I changed. I stop, I stop screaming on people. I raise my voice because, you know, I've got a deep voice, I'm a preacher. But I stop talking to people hard. Why? The day you think you got it, 
He, oh, you obey Friday? Okay, well, let's see what you do Saturday, son, sister. Let's see what you do Sunday. Nobody knows who's really saved except Jesus. Why? He said, the, I know who the Father has put in my hand, and nobody can take them from me. He knows who is real and who is show. Look at John, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said, if you murder your brother in Christ in your heart, you murder me. Ooh. I start seeing all y'all real quick. I was making sure I wasn't mad at you, sister. I, I was making sure that if you did something, I don't care what you did, I ain't going to see you with nothing in my heart. I made sure that when I came today, if I had something in my heart, it wouldn't be here today when I saw you. I know that. I know that. I know that not one murderer shall enter the kingdom. See, it's one thing to murder a stranger, but it's another thing to murder your mother. Oh, y'all ain't catch that. See, the spirit, the, the people who are not spiritual minded, they ain't gonna understand that. It's one thing to murder a stranger, but it's another thing to murder your brother. You will be amazed at what you could do to murder your brother in your heart. Lying, secrecy, creeping, yo, all those things lead to a day of death. Trust me, relationship gonna fall, it's gonna fail. God spoke to me. It's the reason why he put that inside of me. I didn't even question it. I just took it and trembled. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't even look to see if I was wrong or somebody else was wrong. I didn't care who was wrong. When God revealed the truth to you and you really love God, you're going to tremble and you're going to fear with the fear of the Lord. And you're going to change. First John chapter 3, look at verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we're talking about strongholds. The strongholds exist because of sin. Those who walk in sin, their father is not God. Not Jesus, not the Father of Jesus. He is not Jehovah. He is not the Alpha and the Omega. He is not the beginning and end. I'm tired of the world fooling yourself. If you are not going to God and being in God the way he said be, you are not his son. The truth of the matter is you're his creation. But you're somebody else's son. Let's read it again. He said, he that commits sin is of the devil. And that's why people can be gay and use drugs and drink and hurt themselves and break one another and break their own children and murder their own children and set the family on fire and bomb another nation and take this nation power and do this and do this and kill a man for oil and kill a man for electricity and kill a man because he don't wear a turban on his head. You know why? The God of love is not your father. Look, he that committed sin is of the devil. Mm -hmm. It's not murder sin. Mm -hmm. It's not rape sin. Mm -hmm. It's not worldly lust present in a man because of sin. Mm -hmm. 
It's not the pride of life and the lust of the flesh and the pride of the eyes sin. Look, he that committed sin is of the devil. That's why the lie is in some of the body of Christ, so the immature, uh, and they'll say to you, uh, I'm a sinner. Saved by grace. They don't understand. The reason that stronghold is in you, that lie is in you, is because when you confess it, you confess without you realizing it that Satan is still your father. I am the redeemed. But you did? Yes, I did. But I am the redeemed. But you said? Yes, I did. But I am the redeemed. The world is never going to understand the mind of God outside of the mind of God. Because you got to be in God to understand it. It's being in God that makes you equip to handle his understanding. He said, I created you because I wanted you to know me and understand me. God created man because he wants man to know him and understand him. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus will destroy every stronghold you ever face. That's what he is proposed to do. So who is a believer talking about I got a stronghold? God had to check me. I started this series wrong. No strongholds must fall as if you're waiting for them to fall. No strongholds will fall because they fell. Put the word of God on the inside of you. Watch them fall. Stay there long enough. You got a problem with lust? Stay in the scripture concerning lust. And as you do that, you're going to see the scriptures that tell you how to be and how not to be. You're going to run into other scriptures that you don't even know God got in your path. And deliverance will be so swift, you won't even realize you change. Oh, shoot, I'm not a drug addict no more. When did that happen? <laughs> I can't tell you the day when I stopped being a drug addict. I only can tell you who I am. God's swift with deliverance. It's so smooth, you don't even know he did it. Why? Because your mind was so consumed with trusting him to do it. He was able to do it without you interfering. What? It's in your life and your head's banging you against the wall because you're in God's way. He's not going to knock the stronghold down until you move out his way. He doesn't want to hurt you. Oh, God is reaching out with love. He doesn't want to hurt you. He told me, when you stop, I said, Lord, help me with this and help me with that. He said, when you stop loving it, when you come out of agreement with it and agree with me, I'll deliver you. Because when you step into agreement with me, you are already delivered. My promise is sure. God said, I can't lie. That's what you tell the people, right? This is an everyday battle. I'm not going to mention his name, but one of my brethren in Christ. Big scandal, big story came up about him. And I saw his own brethren that bought his CDs and bought his tape and oh, start preaching like him and want to play their background music like him. Yo, they just attacked him. They forgot about restoring one brethren, bringing them back to a hundredfold stand. And they was talking about him and cursing him and biting on him and butting him down. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I said, even if he did it, what's going on behind your closed mind that you think we don't see? Some preachers was on the train preaching on the people real hard. I, and, and then the Lord said, now you preach. He said, now tell the preachers, they better watch how they talk to the people who I'm coming after. 
Because if I'm coming after anybody, God says, I love you. And that's why I'm coming after you. And anybody who got their mouth on you, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you to condemn you, to bring you low, to keep you out of my presence. There ain't a stronghold designed to keep you. But my word is designed to break them all down. I am your shield and your buckler. Who shall you be afraid? That includes devils and thoughts of lust and thoughts of murder and thoughts of rape and thoughts of hate, thoughts of malice and trickery and deception and deception. Somebody say, Satan. Satan. You are no longer my Lord. You are no longer my Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Came, came to, destroy to destroy your works, your works out, of out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. And now the challenge is when we separate. The other day the Lord said, I heard the word sheep. And then I said, yeah, we are sheep. I went, hmm. And then I heard, don't misinterpret the word. I turn sheep into soldiers. He says, sheep that you was crawling on your fours. He said, I stood you up on your two hind feet and I put a sword in your hand. He said, now my sheep are soldiers. On the day you get tired, you got to be careful. That's why I don't want nothing in the midst of us. No, no guide, no guide. You no, know why? On the day I need you to stand with me in battle, I don't want to have a problem with you. And I don't want you to have a problem with me. So if there's any unforgiveness, well, it ain't going to be on me. And if I got to correct something, y'all, I don't need God to come and tell me that I'm treating you wrong. Come on, man. I be walking down the block, bro, and the adversary come, and I'm going to run and leave you. I'm going to run and leave you. I'm going to turn and whisper, I'm out of here. Come on, man. Something wrong. I don't care what you say. Something wrong. If you leave your brethren on the battlefield, something wrong. I don't care what you say. I left you to go be with the Lord. You're wrong. God said, if you got any oil in your heart and you want to come and worship at the altar, leave your gift and go make up with your brother. What he's saying is, your relationship to your brethren is as important to your relationship with him. Why? Your relationship with your brethren speaks about your relationship with him. Can we get an amen? Amen, amen. yes. You know I feel something, right? Jesus. Psalms 33, 16. Psalms 33:16. I can't explain it to y'all, but I'm up here by straight grace. I'm talking to you by straight grace. I don't got no problem. Straight grace. Straight grace. If we could see the warfare in each other's minds, like visually, we would run from each other. I ain't got. I ain't helping them with that. I'm not going in there. You see, when y'all approach each other like that, on scared, on timid. Love sees all things. Love knows all things. Love bear all things. Love is kind of all men. Love is just. Love is righteous. Love is right and exact. But when you when you ain't walking in love, you're not right and exact. You're not walking in righteousness. You're not right. And so that's why something feels funny. Something came at me today. An attack came at me today. So I tried two people, two people. At first I, I told my wife, I said, y'all feel funny today? 
They said, why? No, no. I said, you don't feel like pressure from the enemy? They went, no, no, no. I said, okay, you saw my brother. I said, yo, you feel pressure? And then went, I waited for his response, sniffed him out. And then I went, oh, let me not pay mine. Let me not pay mine to the why. Why? If the enemy shoots you with, shoots you with something, and you shoot you with a bomb, and you bring it into the midst of the brethren, when it explodes, it blow up everybody. You don't know how important this ministry is. That's why I'm glad we're not who we used to be, and I'm glad we're not where we came from. Got a whole totally different flow. Ain't no higher, higher, me better, you better, you over there and me over here. Why are you creeping for? Don't, ain't no creeping. It's the adversary. Why am I talking to you like this? Because if it came to me on a day when I had no order against nobody to make me have all, because the enemy is the master of illusion. If he can get you to believe the illusion, stronghold, like Legos around your head. And they don't unfasten so easy. Kid can't come and knock that stronghold down. The Lord is the crushing hand. And I don't know what's going on. I, I don't need to know what's going on. But when I, when God give me this discernment, I'm telling you, since you know me, when I say that enemy creeping, you don't got to see him. He creeping. If you don't trust me, don't listen to me preach no more. I know what I'm talking about. I know he's been telling me for weeks. It's not the way we always think. We cannot understand the word of God or discern the things of God with a carnal mind. It's not what we see with our eyes. It's what we know by the spirit of truth. And one ministry is not going to be tested. We're going to get a dry day, a false word, a rainy season, a real hot season, a real cold season, a season of going and a season of coming. None of that, the Lord told me, determines if we stand. When did he tell me that? After we went out and did our watch. When we came back. He said, you feel good? I said, yeah. He said, because you did what I told you to do. He said, you know why you don't feel shaky? I said, why? He said, because this is how you stand. Obedience is how you stand. What is God telling you to obey tonight? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word of God. You see, it's not your word from the flesh that lifts a standard against the enemy who is the prince and the power of this world. The God of all those who worship him. See, he's not a God because he's God. He's God because man make him God. He feed him to be worshipped. He got it bad. That's why I'm glad he put me with somebody to walk with. Why? Because as long as I'm walking with him, I'm reminded I'm not the leader. I'm the agreeable. I don't want to be in the lead. I see men who have to lead fall. I want to agree. Why? When two agree, not when one lead, I don't want to lead. I want to lead by agreeing. And so if something comes and I take it and I feel like I'm alone, oh, I, I'm, I'm all jacked up, I'm all jacked up, I'm all jacked up. Why? Because one third of the angels fell and became demons. How one man 
who don't carry the name that's above every name, God handle that one. Even a believer, only one believer can put 1,000 to flight, and two believers, 10,000 to flight. Don't get the battle twisted. I ain't stepping out there. I've been in, I've been in ministries. I've been in so many ministries before I become a star maturing. I already know if he start acting up, I ain't acting up. I don't know how we got here, but I know what's in the atmosphere. Satan will stand in that corner. How could you see him if you're in the dark? It could be a thousand men in a dark room, all separated from each other, making no sound, making no movement, because they're all spiritually dead, and none of them know they're in the dark. Nobody knows the other one is in the dark. How can you see, truly? There is things I said by preaching that I, I read, but I didn't know them. Why? I wasn't doing them. I wasn't doing them. God had me in school. I don't know how God do it. He'll call you to be a teacher, and while you're learning, he'll have you feed other people. I don't know how he do it. But he does it, because as soon as we finish preaching, we got to go home and face the very words that we spoke. And if we're not standing on solid ground, we are shaking immediately. Let's just read this and move on. I'll hold the rest. Um, I saw this series going into 21 classes today. The Lord just said, where you rushing to? Where you going? He said, where you rushing to? Where you going? As long as you breathe and live and have your being in me, that's another day to learn. Where you going? What I'm believing God for, I'm believing God for a room full of people almost every day. I'm going to stand there. That's my job. That's my job. I'm going to stand there. I'm praying. I'm waiting for it. But if I keep falling apart every couple of months, that ain't worthy. That ain't worthy. <laughs> That's not worthy. That's not even pure. You can't stand not being pure. You can't be pure without keeping yourself filled with light. See, light came and gave you himself by grace. But don't misunderstand grace. It's your job to keep yourself filled. He said every man who put his hand to the plow is worthy. So he said, Every man put his hand to the plow and didn't get off the plow. Quit. It's not worthy of my presence. Mm -hmm. Satan is trying to knock us into the unworthy land. Mm How? -hmm. Huh? The stronghold of a double-minded man. Mm -hmm. It's unstable. It makes him unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. At least that man, that woman, think they're going to get anything from God, I saw myself already. Losing the benefit of promises because of choices that keep you dead in the wilderness. The wilderness without experiencing the flow of God's presence that is with a man that walks in obedience. Not the man who takes a dip in a dive. Just consistency and trust in God. Consistency and not relying on yourself. Consistency. Consistency. If it was the consistency of coming to church, we'll be millionaires. It was never that. Somebody duped us, man. That's not what get us saved. That's not what got us saved. 
It was the perfect will of God that got us saved. You know what I mean? People get their life to Christ on the street when I'm outside preaching. On the street, on the train, on the corner, in the park. Brother said, yo, yo, what up, what up? I said, hey, what up, man? You ever give your life to Christ? You want to give your life to Christ? <laughs> he was surrounded. He passed it. <laughs> you want to give your life? He just smiled and said, sure, no problem. I'll take him. Ready? Psalms 33. Uh, after this, I'm going to give you all some scriptures, right? And then next week when I come, when I talk, you're going to be there. You're going to be there. You're going to do your homework this time? Yes. Because I still got y'all on my radar because y'all live with me. I'm watching y'all. Yes. Homework. You say yes. You say yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. Don't stop. Come on, bring me down. Bring me down. All right. Psalms 33. Come on, Elsie. You're going to say, stop that. Give me that scripture. Stop that. Psalms 33, verse 16. Not yet. Hold on. This is the last one for tonight. Verse 16, Psalms 33, verse 16. No man can deliver himself from sin. But, wait, no man can deliver himself from sin. Watch this, you know why? We didn't put ourselves in sin. Sin fell upon every man in Adam's loins. When him and Eve sinned against God. The parents, the first physical born of the human race, the first made from the dirt, and became living dirt, a living soul. Don't start life made dirt. The dirt came life. And now that which is dirt is alive because it carries the spirit of the living God. Breath of life. There is no king saved by the multitude. Not one king can deliver himself. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. Don't care how big your army is. I don't care if you got a million dollars. I don't care if money is all your resources. You know, because soldiers to some men are dollar bills. So God's just not talking to us. You're talking to somebody who has a different kind of soldier. Because men think because they got money, they're going to be able to run from God. But when God shaped that mountain, they knew. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. I don't care how strong you are. You cannot be saved on your own. What is this? Preacher, you shooting fear to the congregation. I'm shooting out the fear of the Lord. He's the only one that can keep you. This is going to be a hard saying. Satan is because God is. In order for you to understand that, you're going to have to go read Ezekiel chapter 28. See who created who and who called who by name. And who saw who's hard in the dark? And who kicked who out? And when God called his sons, who comes also? You don't need to get in the word, find out some stuff. Look, a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. You ain't going to be able to run. You can't run from God and you can't run from the devil neither. You and you, you, what, what the word said? You bewitched. Betwixt. You between two stones, a rock and a hard place. Our horse is a vain thing for safety. Your money, you're, you're dependent upon yourself. You're, 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 it ain't going to help you. It cannot free you from prison. 
Neither shall he deliver anybody's great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Here we go. Here we go. With every temptation, there is a way of escape. Here we go. The way of escape is coming. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Trusting in God brings down strongholds. Trusting in God is obeying his word. He said, trust in the Lord with all our might and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge me, for I am just and right. It will slip by you because the word trust is so big, it doesn't fit in those little letters. You'll go right by it. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto thy own understanding because leaning unto your own understanding for deliverance is false hope. False security. You're just waiting for the house to come down calling on the name of Jesus. You've seen it and you've seen it in other churches. Calling on the name of Jesus and the house just falling down. They all in error. Jesus told me a couple of months ago, he said they're calling my name too much. I didn't understand that. Because I'm, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus. He said you're calling my name too much. He said you're supposed to be worshiping the Father. He said, you know how many churches they worshiping me? And they're not giving the Father the worship? Because all they do is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus said, I did the work. They're calling me too much. They so, I, I, I set it up and designed it so they can call on the name of the Father, so they can go through the Father through me. It's him that saves them through me. Amen. Yes. And they, oh, Jesus, 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 all these songs about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Look, look, you don't even read when he tell you to do that. He said, nobody can come to the Father but through me. The reason we go through him is to get to the Father. And if that's the error, we all jack it. Scary stuff for some. Behold, 18, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul. <laughs> to deliver their soul from death. And to keep them alive in famine. You can have food in your refrigerator. And be starving of the word. And God will understand it. And out of his grace and his mercy. God will save you in your house. We will starve in that sinners. No food. No word of God in the refrigerator of the heart. And he came and he brought us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. I dare us on Monday quit on God. I dare us on Thursday because it got a little hot in the oven. Quit on God. When it's another Christian, he told me, he said it's another believer being hung upside down by someone who calls himself a Muslim Because they think in their dark heart that killing another man is God's righteousness. And God's righteousness is let live and let live and let live. Amen. That come to him through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let live, not kill life. I don't hate you because you don't look like me. Amen. I love you in Jesus' name so you can look like me. Amen. Love cast out all fear. Fear don't cast out fear. Fear put people in bondage. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. 
Our soul wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. We're good right there. We're good right there. We're good right there. Say this with me. I denounce, I denounce and reject, and reject disobedience. disobedience. I denounce, I denounce and, I and I reject no trust, no trust. Doubt, doubt, unbelief, unbelief and, fear. and fear. Say I reject, I reject and denounce and selfishness. selfishness. I, do. I do. Say I do. I, do. I, don't, want I don't want it anymore. It's been hindering me been ever, since. ever since. I deny it. Any more access. Into my, into my heart. Father, Father fill every place fill that the enemy that finds access. access. Pull them out, them and you come in, and, you come and, in. Rain and rain in, in me. Yeah, For in you me. are the most high God, most high God. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Come on and put your hands together. Yeah. Be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have some declarations, some denouncing to do. We have, but we're not ready yet in my classes. Um, but it's being prepared. So what I'm, what I'm saying to you tonight is those who heard the word, just begin to prepare yourself to be clean. Don't assume that you're clean. I seen a man who was clean at 2 o'clock because he really was standing at 6 o'clock Go masturbate. I seen a man, I seen a woman who was really, really faithful on Sunday. Go sleep with another woman two months later. Don't think yourself to stand. Christ said, when you think you're standing, he said, least you fall. Christ knows really who we are. Really, really. It's the one who don't quit. It's the one who don't quit. God showed me Satan's objective today. He said, because you have not transformed your mind with this verse, you don't know it. And so you have fallen into the snare of quitting. All right. I'm the only one who be quitting, huh? I want you to answer that. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I know I'm trying to dig. Mm -hmm. Because I know the state of God's people. Mm -hmm. After he talked to me. Mm -hmm. Before he talked to me, I don't know nothing. But after he talked to me, I know the state of God's people. And I'm going to tell you this. That's a spirit having an active battle with you. How do you deal with demons? With the word of God. Put that word of God down. Ain't nothing I can build. Service is over. You may be dismissed. You may be released. But before I go, I just would like to say, go to our website, www.familyworships.com. Um, leave a donation. There's things here for us to do. And uh, when you sow into the kingdom of God, God brings you back a harvest. That only he can understand. He'll make you understand how he loves you when you obey the word of God. This is Minister Lawson from the Chilean School of Ministry. I love you, but more importantly, I would really love for you to come out and visit us. Why? It's man that sharpens man, not TV or camera that sharpens camera, but man that sharpens man. You got to be around a man of God to get sharpened by a man of God. Love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.